On one hand, we have a trolley problem, probably the most notorious moral experiment. And on the other, the organ transplant example, where a doctor could transplant the organs of an unwilling patient into three other people, saving their lives. Sometimes, the comparison of these two examples is given as a critique of utilitarianism, given that, in both cases, one is sacrificing a person to save a number of other people. And while in the trolley problem, it seems acceptable to reroute the trolley, killing one person instead of three, it does not seem right for the doctor to perform the transplants. Here, we explicit how the two settings are different in a simple act-consequentialist framework. First, let's perform the eudaimonic calculus for the trolley problem. If one pulls the lever, three persons would be saved and one would die. These are important components in the eudaimonic calculus. Is there anything else? Well, some could say that the trolley problem resembles a setting where the duty to rescue applies. That is, the sometimes unwritten societal norm where a member of the community is required to provide help to anyone in imminent danger from accidental or exceptional circumstances, as long as providing help would not present very significant risks, costs or burdens to them. So some would add a negative utility component in their calculations if one were to not pull the lever. This is because the existence of the duty to rescue rule itself produces happiness. So undermining it by not following it is a bad action. Others instead might say that by pulling the lever, one commits murder, since the consequence of pulling the lever is that a person that would have otherwise remained untouched dies. So maybe there should be an added negative utility component in the calculations given by the erosion of the rule to not murder. At the end of the day, if one were to pull or not the lever, he wouldn't probably be perceived as majorly breaking some specific societal rule, because the setting is so rare it's not prioritized for regulation. Ultimately, this is a reason why the example is so popular. It gives a realistic setting to test our moral intuitions on, without strong, preconceived or overarching societal notions. To keep it simple, since the possible rule erosion components would be minor, we will consider the eudaimonic calculus as the widely agreed upon three lives for one. Okay, now for the organ transplant example. In the case of the doctor, he would still save three people and sacrifice one. But now it appears undeniable that another expected consequence of his actions is to undermine the faith in the healthcare and justice system since killing an unwilling patient to transplant his organs is murder. So we would have an additional consequence to consider in the eudaimonic calculus, given by the possible erosion of a societal rule that brings happiness. With this, we have found the difference. In fact, appealing to the undermining of societal rules is probably the most canonical way utilitarians explicit a dissimilarity between the two settings. Now, if one agrees on this difference, he might also want to show that the rule erosion component in the organ transplant case is greater in magnitude than the utility produced by saving two lives. This would make the action of the doctor immoral, as most people's moral intuitions would agree with. One way to do this could be an argument by contradiction, beginning with the assumption that the action of the doctor is not immoral, to then logically deduce an absurd conclusion within the utilitarian framework, proceeding more or less as follows. Suppose the action of performing an organ transplant on an unwilling patient to save lives produced happiness. Then we can allow or imagine this practice being performed by many doctors, the sum of all the utility produced by their actions should be quite big. They should produce a lot of happiness. But we know that if doctors actually behaved this way, it would be catastrophic for our society. Likely no one would go to the doctor anymore. So a sum of positive utility actions would actually lead to a huge amount of suffering. This is absurd. Contradiction reached. Thus, the initial assumption must be false. And if the initial assumption is false, that means that the action of performing an organ transplant on an unwilling patient produces suffering, not happiness. And that in turn implies that the rule erosion component is greater in magnitude than the saving of the lives. Okay, enough of this digression. Back to the difference between the trolley problem and the organ transplants. 
So good, we have given what some might call a standard argument to differentiate the two examples. But there is a case that may generate some confusion on the distinction between the two scenarios. Indeed, sometimes the organ transplant counterexample is given in a slightly different setting, where an extra assumption is added, that the doctor will not get caught and nobody will know of what transpired. This removes the rule erosion component from the eudaimonic calculus. We will call this specific setting the abstract organ transplant counterexample. Now what? We have already discussed the removal of the rule erosion component from the eudaimonic calculus in this channel. Indeed, one can recognize, after some reflection, how strikingly similar the idea behind the sheriff, the grandfather, and the abstract organ transplant counterexample really is. They follow the same playbook comprised of trying to reach a contradiction by emulating the trolley problem in a different scenario but to do so they have to distort their own initial setting. The objections remain the same. To eliminate the rule erosion component, the abstract organ transplant counterexample has to suppose that the doctor knows the future a priori, that he is in possession of perfect knowledge of what will happen. Probably, one would also have to assume that the patients will have their memories wiped too. Whatever the case may be, removing stochastic elements present in our world take the example from improbable to unrealistic or impossible, and one is free to not accept unrealistic counterexamples as defeaters of his moral theory. Or, as John Rawls would say, one may construct a moral theory appropriate for the natural world as we know it. Additionally, one might ask himself, if you take a realistic setting and then remove or tweak some of its components until it resembles the trolley problem, isn't this just a verbal camouflage, just a way of confusing one's moral intuitions? Okay, enough of these arguments that we have already given previously. At the end of the day, differentiating between the organ transplant counterexample and the abstract organ transplant counterexample may be quite beneficial to avoid confusion with the trolley problem. The trolley problem has in common with the abstract organ transplant counterexample the eudaimonic calculus, while with the non-abstract organ transplant case it has in common the realism of the setting, but not, as we have seen, the eudaimonic calculus. With this we have a full picture of the difference between the two examples in a simple, act-consequentialist setting. Oh yes! Finally we have finished discussing these kinds of abstract counterexamples, and in the next video we will give an additional powerful rebuttal that addresses them all in a single swoop.